Good morning, guys. It's Dee Dee from Glue Patch Studio. Got a little paint on my hands this morning. Um, my daughter and my husband made me a cute little table to sit my sewing machine on beside where I'm doing other things. It's not my main sewing machine, but it's the one I like to sew paper stuff next to my journals. So I decided I was going to make me a little topper for it, and then I thought I would bring you guys along. I'm sorry about the lighting. We're going to be all over the place today, so just have to bear with me. Um, I measured my tabletop, and it's 26 by 20. Yeah, 26 by 20. So I cut my fabric 27... Yeah, 27 by 21. Just give me a little extra to play with. Because when you're quilting, it will um, shift around and sometimes you won't have enough. So it's always better to have a little extra. So I decided I would use this cute fabric that, you know, I've been hoarding. You, we buy cute fabric all the time to make that perfect something out of. And it just sits on the shelf. And you say, oh, no, I can't use that. That's my new cute fabric. Well... I'm going to use it for this one. And this is directional fabric, so you have to be careful which, which way you're cutting to make sure that it's going to be displayed in the right direction that you want it to be in. Also, I had this measuring tape fabric that I thought would be really cute on the back. So I cut my back piece at 21 and by 27, and then I cut me a piece of cotton batting to go in the center. And then I'm going to put this piece, because this is the way it's going to sit on the table. So this is the way I want my directional to be. <coughs> Excuse me. So, I'm just going to, this is not all super square. So I'm just going to line it up, you know, pretty close to each other. Excuse me, guys. I'm so excited because I'm, I had a little bitty table and... It, kind of, it was working, but it wasn't working. You know how that goes? Guys, these are the cutest and easiest clips to use. I hope you can see that. These are just quilting pins. And you get these things uh, from somewhere else, like extra. And you snap them on. And they're so easy when you're, when you're um, basting. Is that what you... Yeah. When you're... Let me get my other little tool. Hold on. This little guy right here. Now, you can buy these at um, Hot, uh, Joann's or somewhere. It's just uh, I don't even know what it's called. It's a quilting thingamajig. But my stepdad made this one for me. He He's just super great at little handy wood projects and he loves it. So, my I bought my friend one and her dog got it and chewed the handle all up. So, I said, okay, let me see if we can get one made and he used to work where that he um worked with a lot of metal and stuff so he knew exactly how to do all this so i think he just took a pin uh oh, those big nails and put down in there and then ground the nail around so it would work on a little wood but i love it i love it because he made it so you just stick your pin in here and you push down and there it is. Now, the kind of the rule of thumb when you're basting, you're supposed to put them like a fist width apart. I don't always do that. But, um, I mean, these are like little handles on them. I just love them. And I always start from the middle and work out, keeping your all your layers taut. I mean, it's hard to do like just safety pins. You have to, you almost have to pull up on your fabric to get it to. Isn't that just easy? 
doesn't take long at all to get a big quilt um, pinned and ready to quilt. A big piece. I hope you guys are having a happy new year. It's New Year's Eve. We don't have anything planned. That's kind of the way I like it. <laughs> that way I get to be in the studio and sew and glue and in my happy place. So, it's supposed to be bad weather here soon. Hope everybody stays safe. Cutest little fabric. It's like sewing patterns. I also love to use um, spray based when I'm doing small projects like this. And you can just spray in between the layers and it holds it really, really well. Really well. I like it. I'm, I'm out right now, so we're going to pin. But that's okay, because I wanted to show you guys my cute little pins. And I'll try to find a link where you can get these and what they're called. Down below. I'm sure that is not going to move much. Now, let's see. We got that off hand on the back too and then we're going to be ready to go to the quilt machine and <clears throat> quilt this baby up so let's go to the machine okay guys we're at the machine now and i've already done a, a test run to see if we're ready and we are and i have just a pale yellow in my machine we're going to bring that needle up and pull our bobbin thread out. All right, we got both threads on top now. Now I'm just gonna do a meandering stitch all over this. Just like that. And then I think I'm going to tie these. I'm not sure how long our battery will last. Because sometimes it doesn't let me know. I'm just going to tie that so that runs up. Okay, let's take these out. And we're almost done, guys.
I'm just going around the edges in case there's any places that I didn't get close enough to that we might. make sure that we didn't leave any big open spaces on the edge. knock this baby out. All right, we're all the way. So now we're gonna take this and trim it up. Okay guys, we're at the cutting table now. So I'm just gonna start by trimming um, one side of this first to give us a straight edge to start working with. So I'm going to trim this side first because I don't know why. Just because that's the side I want to trim, I guess. So I'm, I'm probably cutting maybe a half an inch off. I'm not sure, but we got to start with the straight edge. So we're going to put that along our bottom. <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and pull this over a little. Because we said 26. So I'm going to cut. I'm going to go ahead and do 26. All right. There's two squared up edges. Three down, one to go. Um, I'm not 
sure how that happened. But it's off a little. <clears throat> Surely is. All right. Let's see what I can do to fix that. Make it a little bit. trim this last little corner here and then we're gonna cut our binding to go around okay, guys, okay, I'm sorry my battery died and I forgot to turn it back on I took my square fabric and I just laid it out because in order to have a bias binding, it has to be on the stretch. Can't be just a straight edge of your fabric. It needs to be right here, especially if you're going around corners, which I am. My table, the corners of my table are have a little round. So I cut the corners of this so they would have a little round like the table. So, because I did that and didn't keep it straight, I have to cut it this way. If you're just binding around something that's square, you don't have to do this. You can just do straight row, two inch, two and a half inch strips of fabric with the fabric. But what I did was I, I took my fabric and I laid it out and my cutting mat has a 45 degree angle and I just laid it on that angle from corner to corner, you know, squared it up, and I cut. So, I already have my angle because I cut the other side without you guys. But this is my um, binding buddy ruler, and I just lay it out the width that I need. sure why that's and there's one strip right there and then you just continue doing that actually you don't even have to have it on the line anymore as long as you've got that angle cut you can just lay your your ruler down and cut just like that because you've already got it oh on the bias I'm not sure what that was all right so now I just took my pieces and in order for you to sew them together and they they connect like this you're going to take your pieces. Let me see if I can do this right now. And they're not all going to work. They're not all going to match. You can lay it out like this and make sure that it's that it's going to work right and then you can just turn it over like this. And you're going to leave, you're going to line it up, and you should have about a quarter hanging over this side and a quarter hanging over that side. So then when you sew it and you open it up, <clears throat> so see, we'll do this one this way, turn it over, and have our little quarter there. And then we'll go to the machine and sew all these together and have one big long strip of bias binding to go around the edge. So you don't want to line it up. You don't want to put this tip to that tip 
Because if you do, when you sew it, it's going to be wonky. So remember to let it overhang on both ends about the same amount. That's like your stitch width. another one yeah I'm not even gonna worry about that little piece because it's not gonna show much all right guys we're gonna go to the machine and sew this up see what we got all right guys we're back at the machine now we're just gonna turn these over where we can get us the seam going right down through there. And I'm actually gonna go into that V. And I'm gonna go straight down about a quarter of an inch and I'm gonna come out in that show you oh can you see my stitching where it comes out in that little V that's what you want and then look you have your strips on together okay we're just gonna continue this on down till we get them all done There's another one. All right, guys, I'm going to continue and sew these, and I'll be right back. All right, guys, I'm back. I finished sewing the pieces together, and I took it to my um, ironing board, and I pressed my seams open. Then I folded it in half. Now it's ready to be attached to my little quilt piece. Now... Remember when you're when you're starting on a piece with your binding always start on a long edge never on the corner and Leave yourself about a six to eight inch tail So I'm gonna fold this up So I'll know not to Start sewing that don't not to sew my tail down. I'll get it out in a minute so I'm just going to start clipping. And then I'm going to clip this all the way around. And when I get down here to my, my curve, I'm just going to, I actually might use pins. You can use it. I'm just going to kind of hold it a little bit taut as I'm going around the curve. Just kind of pull it a little. And make it go where you want it to. And then when you, when you do that... me so then when you do that you're gonna um it's gonna have a little pressure on it and when you get to the other side and you flip it, it after you've sewn it it's just gonna curl around that corner so beautifully so see we're just gonna give that a little pull Just work it around and you make it, you be in charge. You make it go how you want it to go. Just like your sewing machine stitches. Don't be afraid of those stitches. You're in control of where they go. So, 
see how I have that just, I, I know that's kind of wonky, but it, it's still going to be, that's where my, is that where my seams met? Anyways, we're going to sew around that right there, and that's going to make the prettiest little curve. So I'm going to continue on and and clip this all the way around, and then I'll be back to show you what we got. All right, guys, I've got it pinned and clipped all the way around. Now I'm about to stitch it on. I'm going to start over here where I pinned it, where I started. And I'm going to just remove that clip. I'm going to start right here. And I'm probably going to do a half inch over stitch instead of a quarter. Just because it will take up more. And I, I, don't, I don't want my binding to be really big. So I'm going to try that. I'm just going to start right here. And start my stitching. see what I'm doing all right let's see let's move that all the way over because I believe that that is a half inch now this is a quarter inch little template that you can use to measure can put your little now see that's more than a quarter so I think that's gonna work this is the coolest little thing it's a PM quilting and laser works it has a tiny little hole right here you stick your needle down in and you can use that to make sure you're getting a accurate quarter inch all right let's get this baby stitched up curve because we want it just to ease into it. How about that for seeing what's happening? fabric to be bunched up. guys I think you get the idea I'm gonna finish stitching this around and I'll be right back all right guys I got it sewn all the way around to where we left our opening now when you join your opening up you want to cross got to have a straight edge you want to overlap whatever the width of this is like it's it's two and a half inches wide let's use this well that's not going to help us is it all right let's use this one okay yeah it's two and a half inches wide 
So however wide this is, is how much you have to overlap these two, okay? So we're gonna line them up and we're gonna look, we're gonna mark at the two and a half is right there. So we're gonna cut right there. All right, now we're going to um, pinch all this up together because we we need these to we need a lot of room. So I turn it where it's away from me, and I lay it open like this. I hope you can see. Lay it open. Like this. And then like this, I think. You sew it that way. All right. I got to figure this out before I can. You have it this way. I'm not sure it's that way. Let's just pin and see. It's, it's very confusing until you do it one time. Let's see. Okay, if it's pinned like that. What you're doing is you're, you're putting them print to print. same side and you all always have to do it and then yeah because if you're not careful you will get it all twisted up okay so this is the way I want it so I'm gonna leave a quarter inch of this and a quarter inch of this hanging off and I'm going to um, take it to the machine and we're going to pull this together because we need that that slack pulled in where we can where we can work. Okay. Now we're going to take this to the machine and we're going to stitch from here to this V. From this V to this V. Straight down there. Just put my needle down into that little V and get everything straight. Just takes a minute. And you want to start going toward this V right here. And if you keep your eye on where you're going with your stitches, that needle will go straight there. All right, let's see if it worked. It did work. Okay, now let's cut this off. There you have that. Look at there. Now you just stitch that right down. And that's what we're going to do. I hope I'm not making you guys sick moving that camera. I don't know who came up with that little way to make that line up, but it was a genius idea. All right, 
now we have to trim our corners right here when you do a, a corner you have to trim right up to your stitch line to let that have some give if that makes sense see it it spreads it out and it's going to make your corner turn and lay so much better because it's not going to have any tension on it anywhere everywhere there's a curve you should trim like this right up without cutting your stitch line but up really close now i'm just going to trim all four of these and i'll be right back okay guys i've almost got this all pinned up but i wanted to show you where i had clipped the corners and i'm going to trim some of that bulk out from in there just because we just don't want a whole lot in our corner right there and then when you pull it around it just lays over so great and I'm not sure if I want to do this on the machine or if I want to hand stitch it I love to hand stitch because I can control it and make it look how I want it to look when it's done. You, sometimes when you're sewing layers, your stitches underneath are not don't quite go where you want them to all the time. All right, that is going to be cute as pie. So. I forgot to tell you guys, if you take a tape measure and measure all the way around your piece, that'll give you an estimate on how long a strip of binding that you're going to need to cut for this. I, I forgot to tell you that. Mine was about 50 inches around this, and I think I had a little more than that. So, um, yeah, I'm not sure. I might just stitch this down on the machine I'm not real sure okay guys I think I have decided to do it just on the machine um, I found a little applique stitch that I kind of like and I have my clear thread underneath so you can't see it so I think I'm going to like that just gonna take my time and work around the edge of this is going to do it. I'm going to work on this and go all the way around and I'll be right back. Hey guys, we did it. I just, it fits my table perfect around the edges and curves around. That turned out really cute. I'm happy with it. Super, super happy with it. I used a um, poly monofill. Uh, I can't think of what it's called. It's clear thread. I use that in my bobbin. So you can't even see the stitches where I stitched it on the machine. See, it's like a little blanket stitch. I thought that was really, really cute. And then it didn't sh doesn't show at all on the front. So I love it. It works out great for what I wanted it for. So thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video and you'll be back to watch another one. Bye guys.